What does it mean to be a digital citizen? How is our life offline similar to and distinct from our online existence? And what new challenges does this create for our morality? In this discussion, we will dive into the complexities of digital citizenship and explore what it means to be an ethical digital citizen. It's probably difficult to imagine our existence in the 21st century without thinking of our digital lives. The rapid development of online technology has shaped a quality of life that is so distinct from what the world had experienced before. Our mobile phones and personal computers, for instance, are not only considered as mere tools to help us through our everyday lives, because more than that, they take a central role in our existence that they are now considered as basic human necessities. The rise of the internet, one may say, is revolutionary. It has transformed the way we think, understand, behave, and interact with the world. It gave birth to a new brand of convenience and efficiency, one that continues to evolve as new technologies arise. We see its major benefits in the field of communication. Our online connectivity allows us to transcend geographical barriers through instant communication. It fostered a sense of a global online community, giving new avenues not only for personal connections, but also for intercultural dialogue and collaboration. It had also transformed the way we access information. What the world had access through print media before, the online community can now access with just a few clicks. Knowledge acquisition and knowledge building evolved, with websites offering free and convenient access to a vast expanse of educational resources from all over the world. The educational domain has benefited, giving flexible learning opportunities through online education. In the sphere of economics, we see how online tools and services made banking and investment easier through online banking apps and e-wallets. The exponential rise of e-commerce led to more opportunities for businesses to thrive and reach a market beyond their immediate scope. Well, for buyers, this is a welcome development since they are provided a wider range of options without the hassle. The internet has also transformed the world of recreation and entertainment through the birth of online streaming services, online games, content creation, and social media platforms. Especially in urban locales with very little green spaces, people take a lot of their comfort and enjoyment in digital leisure experiences. And as we move forward, online technology will continue to change our world. However, as it creates more opportunities, it also creates new risks and complex challenges. As we navigate this digital landscape, it is essential to be mindful of its ethical dimensions and strengthen our existing ethical discourses on online technology and digital citizenship. But what exactly does it mean to be a digital citizen? In its most basic sense, 
we know that a citizen is a member of a particular nation who is granted certain rights and assigned certain responsibilities by its government as a consequence of their membership. Alongside the privileges that come with citizenship, every citizen is expected to comply with the corresponding obligations attached to them. So, being a citizen is not just what you can enjoy, but also what you should contribute. These two are important aspects in understanding citizenship. But what about being a digital citizen? What are our digital rights and responsibilities? More importantly, who ensures that digital rights are enjoyed and that digital responsibilities are fulfilled? How do we ensure well-being, safety, and protection in the digital world? If the digital world is borderless, how are we to make sense of our digital identities? Jumping off from our definition of a citizen, a digital citizen is a member of the digital world who has certain rights and responsibilities. In this sense, anyone who has access to digital technology is considered a digital citizen. However, in the same way that we have good and bad citizens in the physical world, there can also be good and bad citizens in the digital world. Certainly, we ought to be good digital citizens. But we can only come close to an understanding of what this looks like by inquiring about our rights and responsibilities as digital citizens. Our rights as digital citizens align with our fundamental human rights and freedoms, such as the freedom of online expression, the right to access online information and online services, the right to digital education, and the right to digital property. Furthermore, we also have the right to security, privacy, and redress. While some of these rights and freedoms are fully exercised, the fast development of our online technologies poses new problems and challenges, especially in data privacy, cybersecurity, disinformation, and accountability. All digital citizens should enjoy the right to privacy of their personal data and online activities. But are existing safety measures sufficient? And are digital citizens properly informed of what happens to their data when they access digital platforms and services? How do we ensure that digital citizens are protected from unauthorized surveillance and data mining. Moreover, the right to cybersecurity remains at risk because of the evolving cyber threats such as phishing, hacking, identity theft, cyberbullying, online trafficking, and other online attacks. How can we build safe online environments amidst the threat of cybercrime and online security breaches? How do we ensure that all cyber criminals are punished by the law? The threat of this information that permeates our online world also continues to threaten the very fabric of our society. The rise of computers and digital systems led to what we know as the information age. 
but in this era of fake news and troll farms where deception, confusion, and manipulation are deliberately done to sway public opinion or advance personal agenda, are we now entering a disinformation age? Our online communities highly influence our knowledge acquisition and knowledge building practices. What safeguards and policies do we have against this information? This brings us to the issue of accountability as well. How do we seek justice for crimes committed online? especially those that cross international borders and those where anonymity plays a role? How do we seek justice for crimes against truth and knowledge? How do we seek accountability for masterminds and peddlers of fake news and disinformation? Are our existing laws sufficient and comprehensive enough to protect digital citizens from harmful online activities? The right to redress means that we should be afforded by the government and its legal system the right to seek for legal accountability and protection from all digital offenses. Currently, there is still a huge gap in our legal systems when it comes to ensuring that these rights are fully met. And while we demand the government to develop more stringent policies, as digital citizens, we must also do our part in fulfilling our digital responsibilities. This includes respecting the rights of others adhering to our cybersecurity laws and exhibiting online etiquette. Certainly, this also includes the responsibility to inquire into the basis and applicability of these rights, raising questions and potential solutions to the gaps in our laws, and looking into the questionable aspects of our standards for good online behavior. Aside from our duties to ourselves, such as being careful of the personal data we share online and protecting our passwords, we also have duties to respect the rights of our fellow digital citizens. We have the responsibility to respect their personal data as well as their private information, and also respect their intellectual property. We also have the responsibility to engage with others politely and manage differences through respectful communication. Furthermore, a digital citizen must be critical of the information they come across online. One must be wary of fake news, and they should share information conscientiously. Because digital citizens play a role in ensuring that the internet remains a safe, inclusive, and empowering space for everyone, critical thinking should take center stage in our digital lives. For one, Critical thinking will allow digital citizens to assess the accuracy, credibility, and reliability of online information and online personalities. It will allow us to differentiate between fact and opinion, identify existing biases and presuppositions, and understand the context in which information is presented. Critical thinking also equips digital citizens with prudence, allowing them to recognize online fraud, resist manipulation tactics, and adopt secure online practices. 
Critical thinking also enables respectful and meaningful online discourse through open-mindedness and consideration of others' views. Critical thinking, therefore, is the cornerstone of ethical digital citizenship. Actively engaging in philosophy and ethics helps us navigate the complexities of the digital world responsibly, bringing us closer to our goal of creating safe, inclusive, and empowering online spaces for everyone.